Attention. The great river of life sweeps poor mortals on and on. It is serious business steering a true course with very little time for comedy. But in every life, as in the theater, there comes a lighter touch of laughter, even when laughter becomes tailored for murder. And so to our story, starring Anne Gwynn. minds which seem to be controlled by others. And those in control, very often women with domineering traits, can cause the unsuspecting male a great deal of trouble. We find Hector Habermeyer tossed about like a chip on the running sea, always at the mercy of beautiful Phyllis Stanley. Here is the story, almost a tragedy, woven by the sharp, needling mind of a woman who had to dominate until it became an Obsession. Hector. Yes, Phyllis? I think you're wonderful. Gosh. You too, Phyllis? Uh-huh. Uh, what do you want this time? Oh, Hector, why are you always so suspicious? Well, I'd like to know why I wouldn't be. Uh, I've been wrapped around your little finger so many times, I I'm beginning to look like a wedding ring. I'm sorry, but honest, this time, I'm only thinking of you. Phyllis, you really, you really mean it? Uh-huh. Tomorrow night, would you like to drive me to Centerville to Mildred Rappaport's band? Mildred Rappaport? Phyllis, you know your father told you that you could never, never go to another Mildred's party on account of the last time Yes, you... I know. Oh. This time he's not going to know anything about it. But, Phyllis, I haven't got a car, and there's no bus since Mrs. Murphy had twins and refused to drive it anymore. Father has a car. Fat chance of his loaning it to me. You know what he thinks of me. Papa would never know, Hector. He's sick in bed. I've got the key to the garage. Oh, Hector, please. Oh, all right. All right. I know something awful is going to happen, but I'll do it. I'll, I'll meet you at the garage at 8.30. You're just wonderful, Hector. Oh, I'm so glad I know you. And I'll try not to spill any salt or break any mirrors. And I'll wish on the moon just for luck. Quiet to make more noise than an airplane. Oh, I wish I was in one right now. Uh, I mean, I wish I was in one right now. I'd feel a lot more comfortable. Where's your overcoat? It's huh? cold out tonight. You'll freeze. Don't worry about me. I, I'm just as warm as toast. Well, I'm not. You must have unit heat. Oh, where's the key to the garage? Here, and don't talk so loud. All right. Here, hold this box. Anyway, it's for you. For me? Yeah. Oh, Hector. Hector. Orchids. Oh, you shouldn't Come have. on, come on. Let's get out of here. I I'm nervous. Orchid, my very first. Oh, Hector, I'll bet you pawned your overcoat to buy these. Get in and don't talk so much. Is the key in the ignition? No, but here's a duplicate. What? I had it made while Papa was getting shaved today. Uh, I guess he didn't know what a close shave he was getting. Hector, did you really pawn your overcoat? No, I, I gave my old one away. The tail is just ain't finished with him, a new one. You mean you're really going to get an honest-to-goodness tailor-made overcoat? Sure, sure. I made a little extra money. Uh, you know, out of my invention. Your invention? <laughs> what on earth did you ever invent? A silencer for a soup spoon. Come on, come on. Let's get out of here. Hmm. 
You know, Hector, you're really awful sweet. I guess I don't appreciate you the way I should. My gosh, Phyllis. Uh, nothing matters except that we're together and going to a party. Do, uh, do you realize this is the first party you've gone to with me since... Gosh, I don't know when. I know. I feel kind of as if it was Easter or something. Oh, Hector, you make me so ashamed. And I promise I'm never going to be mean to you again. And this time it's a real promise. I've crossed my heart and hope to die. I... <laughs> Oh, Hector, what happened? Oh, flat tire. For a moment, I thought God took me literally. Well, what are we going to do? What can we do when we have a flat tire except change it? Oh, dear, in the car, Papa will find out, and I'll be late to the party, and... Yeah. There's a car coming, Hector. I'm going to hail it. Maybe they'll give us a lift. But, but, yeah. but, but what, what good's a lift? I, I can't leave your father's car parked here in the middle of the road. Well, what do you know? It's little Phyllis. Oh, Archie. And Hector. Archie. Oh, hello, Archie. How wonderful. You're just in time. Are you by any chance going to Mildred Rappaport's party? No place else, beautiful. Uh, trouble, bud? Yeah, but I can... A flat tire. Well, uh, nothing to it. You just hop in here beside me, beautiful, and we'll be there in nothing flat. But, but, but Phyllis, you, you, you can't... Get it? Nothing flat. <laughs> Very funny. I like to flatten... Oh, that's wonderful of you, Archie. Uh, you won't mind, will you, Hector? I'll see you in the morning. But, but, but your father... But, but, well, we got to get home. I, I mean, the car... Don't worry about nothing, bud. I'll take good care of the little woman. Goodbye, Hector. Thanks but, for everything. But... Oh, women. Women. <laughs> A few minutes past six the next morning. A tired and very cold Hector is driving Phyllis's father's car back to its stable. But Hector's thoughts are on the perfidy of women. He is so engrossed he almost runs down a hitchhiker, a man in a gray overcoat. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry, mister. I, I almost didn't see you. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, going my way? Uh, sure, sure. Climb in. Oh, Mighty cold this morning. Yeah. Cold as a woman's heart. You haven't got an overcoat, have you? No. And believe me, it'll be the last time I ever... Oh, what's the use? Say, uh, we're just about the same size, aren't we? Yeah, I guess so. You notice this overcoat? Yeah. Gee, a guy couldn't help it. That's beautiful. You know, all my life I wanted one just like that. And the hat, too. That's one swell outfit, mister. Yeah, it is. You can't get cloth like that now. It's a very unusual coat. Tailored for me by my Bond Street tailors, London. London? England? Uh-huh. Gosh. Oh, uh, stop at the next corner I get off here. Yeah. I uh, say, son, uh, how would you like this coat? Oh, would I like it? You know, if I was rich, I'd buy that coat from you. Oh, well, you don't need to. I'll give it to you. Huh? G give it to me? Are you crazy, mister? <laughs> I'd only give it to someone else. I'm tired of it. You've done me a good turn, you know. Uh, Emerson's law of compensation. Yeah, but, but... Here, here, take it. And I'll throw in the hat for good measure. Josh, I, I can't believe it. I, I think I'm dreaming. Only I I don't like accepting favors like this. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't you worry, old chap. You're really doing a favor for me. You don't know just how big a favor yet. <laughs> well, now, what do you suppose he meant by that? <laughs> Hello, is Mr. Hector Habermeyer there? Did he get my message when I called a while ago? Oh, he did? And he didn't leave any word? Oh, he didn't. No. No, thank you. I'll call back. Phyllis! Phyllis, where is the evening paper? I've looked all over the place for it. Man can never find anything he wants in this place. The women always beat him to it. Where is my paper? Papa, for heaven's sakes, don't scream so you'll burst a blood vessel. Besides, I didn't touch your silly old paper. Papa, what's that in your hand? Why, is the evening paper, of course. It's... Oh. Oh, so it is, isn't it? I must have picked it up or something. Yes, I guess you did or something. Oh, Papa, the telephone didn't ring or anything. I mean, Hector didn't call me, did he, Papa? No, Hector didn't call me, did he, Papa? But I saw the little twerp downtown. Oh, you did? Yeah, what's happened to him? Did someone leave him a gold mine or something? What do you mean? Well, I never saw such a sight in all my born days. Instead of the measles, Hector's broken out in a rash of new clothes. Where he got the money, I don't know. But that coat he was wearing today must have cost a fortune. And a hat, the first time I ever saw that long head with a hat on before. Hector? With a hat on? 
Who is he with? Huh? Oh, that silly little Barbara Dingles. And she was hanging on his arm as if he was going to blow away. Barbara? Hm. Well, I like that. But then Hector never did have any case. Where were they going? Who do you think I am? A crystal ball or something? The way they looked, you thought they were headed for the moon. Oh. Uh, gray tailored overcoat. Gray felt hat. Huh. And a murder over in Centerville last night. Oh, they're always having murders in Centerville. Papa, did did Hector look interested in Barbara? Not that I care, of course, but some guy bumped off in an apartment house. No means of identification. But the night clerk swears he can identify the murderer. Oh, Papa, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Well, listen to this description of the murderer, and you'll care. A short, stocky man dressed in a beautifully fitting gray English tweed overcoat. Also wearing gray felt hat pulled low over his face and... But what's that got to do with... Oh, Papa. Gray English tweed overcoat. Gray hat. Yes. Yes, the very same outfit. There couldn't be two like it in the whole country. Couldn't be a better picture of Hector Havermeyer if they'd photographed him coming out of the corpse's apartment. But, Papa, Hector couldn't kill. Well, not even a man. Why, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous or not, I'm going to call the police. Please don't. You're crazy to think it's Hector. And, and anyway, Hector couldn't have killed anybody last night. He, he I, I mean, he just couldn't have killed anybody. Oh, why couldn't he? The way I felt last night was a fine night for a murder. And besides, what do you know about Hector's not being able to kill anybody last night? Oh, nothing. It's, it's just so crazy. Besides, there are a lot of great coats in the world. Not like that one, there isn't. No, sir. I'm going to call the police. No, Papa. Let me talk to him. And if he did it, it must have been for a good reason. Oh, gosh, it's so thrilling. Hector Havemeyer, a murderer. <laughs> I never knew he had it in him. <laughs> A fine night for murder, Papa said. And the two articles of clothing worn by the murderer pointed to Hector. A gray English tweed overcoat and a gray hat, once worn by a stranger, now adorn the forlorn frame of Hector. And all this because Phyllis had to have her own way, giving little thought to the man who loved her. Her self-made pedestal was nothing but a growing obsession. In just a moment, we return to our story. Turn to the pattern of gray tweed in this story, tailored for murder, starring Anne Gwynn. Hector Havemeyer has suddenly acquired new glamour, squiring a beautiful girl, and not Phyllis. Dressed in a very fine tailored outfit, he is the bon vivant of the boulevard. Phyllis has woven a complicated pattern, and now filled with tiny darts of remorse, starts to tear down the structure of deceit she willfully built. But maybe this is only another facet of her character because, finding herself scorned, she may erect a new and more complicated dwelling to house her selfish and thoughtless obsession. Hector? Yes, Phyllis? I know you have a secret, Hector, but you know, you can tell me everything. I won't breathe it to a soul. I know you had a good reason. Good reason for what? Well, for... Oh, you know what. 
Well, I don't know any such hey, thing. Hey, Bud. Hector, the policeman. Hey, Bud, uh, are you Hector Havemeyer? Who, me? No, your second cousin. Come on, Hector. Get the lad out and come along with me. I arrest you for murder. What is this, a joke? Sure, it's a joke. All murders is jokes. I'm the corpse. Only corpses can't laugh. But, 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 uh, but who? I, I mean, what? I, I mean, whom did I murder? I don't know. When we was introduced, the corpse wasn't wearing nothing but a couple of orchids. <laughs> well, then, officer, I don't believe it was Hector. Hector doesn't like those kind of people, do you, Hector? Well, he don't know one of them kind now because he ain't around any longer. Oh. And no matter what the corpse was wearing, we know what you was wearing. And it was a snazzy outfit. That snazzy outfit you got on right now. Oh. Gray English tweed overcoat, cut beautiful, just like yours. Hey, nice material. Your grandfather had a coat like that once. He was buried in it, God rest his soul. Uh, but to get back to you, Hector, you wore that coat to the murdered man's apartment. That hat, too. You can positively be identified. But, but, but this coat, it, it, it isn't mine. I mean... Oh, I... so you stole it, eh? Hector. Yeah, so... your boyfriend's not only a murderer, he's a thief. Oh, Hector, you told me it was made especially for you. Oh, he did, eh? Well, then he's not only a thief and a murderer, he's a liar as well. You, you just gotta listen to me, officer. I, I was riding along, minding my own business, like I said, when I ran over this fellow in the gray overcoat. Oh, so and... you're a hit-and-run driver, too. So... Now, Hector, don't talk anymore. Every time you open your mouth, you put the electric chair in it. Oh. You said it, sister. But it's true. I, I gave him a ride. We, we were both the same size, and he was so appreciative that he, he handed them to me. Uh, this was 6 o'clock yesterday morning, and well, I... what was you doing out at 6 o'clock yesterday morning? Answer me that. And also, where'd you been? I, I... I... Hector... Oh, yes, Phyllis. I forgot. Well, I I was just kind of nervous, officer, and I, I was riding around Not and... only are you a murderer, a thief, and a liar, but a hit-and-run driver. Uh, well, come along with me, bud. You've got a lot of explaining to do, and you'll do it to a judge. Uh, open and shut case against Hector Havemeyer. Hmm. Hector Havemeyer held for sensational orchid murder. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, I told you that jerk wouldn't come to no good end. Papa, I've got to go down to the jail and see him. No daughter of mine is going calling on a murderer. But, Papa... Young lady, you stay right in this house where you belong. I know Hector didn't do it. At first I was excited. It sounded kind of romantic knowing a murderer. But when you think maybe he can be electrocuted for it... Oh, Papa, I've got to see him. He's innocent and I know it. What do you know about it? I... Mm, nothing. Uh... Or about him either, it turns out. That cock and bull story about his being given that coat, fiddlesticks. You know as well as I do that Hector hasn't got a car. Papa, there's something I've got to tell you. Well, save it till later. I've got important business to attend to. Uh, but, Papa... Get my coat and hat and don't bother me. I'll get the car out of the garage. Are you going downtown? Yes, but you're not going with me, if that's what you're hinting. Well, I was only going to the store for some yarn. I'm all out. Oh, all right, all right. Come on, but I'm in a hurry. hope this old crate starts. That's the trouble when you don't drive cars often. They get kind of balky. Maybe it's leaking or, or something. Leaking what? Gas. Leaking gas? A lot you know about cars. Well, what's this? I... Oh. A box. A box like you put corsages in. What's it doing here? Nobody ever gave me no flowers. Uh, I... I I don't know. I'm sure and I... And a petal from the flower still in the box. Huh. An orchid petal. Oh, so that's it. Just as I thought. Hmm. Motor dry as a bone. Not a drop of gas in the car. An orchid petal in the front seat. Sure, sure, that's it. That's where Hector Havemeyer got his car. From me. Why, that low-down, dried-up shrimp. That sniveling excuse for an ape. Papa, what are you talking about? Hector Havemeyer, he stole my car. This is the murder car. I'm going right down to the police. You can't, Papa. There's no gas. Then I'll walk. <laughs> Now, Havemeyer, you talk and talk fast. No more fancy stories. From now on, we want nothing but the truth, the whole truth, to help you. And even the truth won't help you. But I've told you everything, just as it happened. Except where you were, what you were doing out, and where you got the car. Mr. Officer, hasn't anybody been here asking for me? What do you expect, Santa Claus? Well, I just thought maybe that, well, perhaps... Well, it... well, you do too much thinking and not enough talking. Come on now, talk. Hey, who's coming in here? Oh, officer, I... This got... is a third degree, can't you count? Officer, I've got valuable information. I'll hang that low-down excuse for a man. I wish somebody would make up their minds whether I get electrocuted or hanged. Why, you poor sniveling little... Oh, how do you do, Mr. Stanley? You stole my car. What? Yes, not only that. 
Here's the box. The murder corsage came in. No. Is this true, Havemeyer? Did you steal this man's car? I, I, yes, yes, it's true. But I, I didn't steal it, though. I just borrowed it. Borrowed it? Listen to him. Borrowed it. All right, that'll do, Havemeyer. Now we've got everything except the confession. But... Not that we need it. We can electrocute you without it. No. Hey, what do you think this is, Grand Central Station? Oh, Hector, I'm so sorry. I hope I got here in time. Yeah, just in time to hear your footloose boyfriend admit he stole my car. Who is this dame? She ain't no dame. She's my daughter. Oh, Hector, I'm so ashamed. And what I think that you would have paid with your life rather than tell the truth. Oh, Hector, how can I ever thank you? Oh, gee, Phyllis, what's a mere life when you're concerned? Hey, what is this? Old home week or something? Officer, what time was the murder committed? Oh, kind of early. Round nine, I guess. Why? Well, because of Archibald and the gas station attendant. Phyllis Stanley, what are you talking about? They're both outside, both of them. And they'll help me prove to you that Hector did not kill that man in Centerville. He couldn't have. What's this? Officer, Hector was with me in the car. It was my corsage. Hector pawned his overcoat to buy it for me. And then Papa's car had a flat tire. What? You were with him in the car? He was taking me to Mildred Rappaport's dance. I thought I told you. All never right, to... now, never mind the homework. Let's have the story. Well, it was nearly nine when he had the flat tire, just a few miles out of town. Then Archibald came along. He'll tell you himself if you are. Well, asked later, him. later. Go on, sister. Well, then I got in Archibald's car and, and left Hector, all alone in the middle of the road with Papa's car. You trust that lunkhead alone with my car at nine o'clock at night? I tell you, officer, never have a daughter. It's a great mistake. And this other man, the gas station attendant, he fixed the car, so that'll set the time. Mm. You mean you went to the party and left this poor goop sitting in the middle of the road waiting for morning to come along? Yes, and I'm so ashamed. Well, Hector, if all this checks, I guess you're free. I ought to have known that any guy as dumb as you wouldn't have sense enough to commit murder. <laughs> Hector, I've misjudged you, I'm afraid. I guess I owe you an apology. Gosh, Mr. Stanley, don't apologize to me. I, I, I couldn't bear it. You let me do what I want. After all, a man's got to admit he's wrong once in a while. But I... Will you shut up, you little pie-faced twerp? And let me apologize before I beat the few brains you've got out of your head? Now listen to me. I apologize. Uh, yes, Mr. Stanley. Hector? Yes, Phyllis? Hector, would you do me a great big favor? Why, why, yes, Phyllis. Oh, my gosh. You're falling for that line again, Hector. I take that apology back. Don't pay any attention to him, Hector. And this time it isn't a line at all. I swear it isn't. I... You remember what you asked me a long time ago? I've asked you a lot of things, Phyllis. But this was very important. You asked me to marry you. Oh, oh yeah. Well, Hector, I... I thought if you'd do me a great big favor and ask me again, I I might think very seriously about saying yes. You did? I, I mean, you would? I, I mean, you will? Yes, Hector. Oh. Good heavens, Hector. You fainted. Now I know you really care. <laughs> And long, long ago, someone said, What a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Thus, full of remorse and seeing the fine and beautiful love of Hector for its real value, Phyllis destroys forever her selfish obsession. In just a moment, I'll be back with a preview of next week's story. <laughs>
what can a bouquet of white violets mean to a young and beautiful bride of one day? What strange twisting and torture, what doubts and fears are distilled from the perfume of lovely white flowers? And where is the key to the lock of this girl's mind that will open up the doors to peace and beauty? You will find yourself wanting to help this lovely girl. You'll find her wanting to relinquish the grip on her past in next week's story of... Obsession. Starring Anne Gwynn was produced and transcribed under the direction of C.P. McGregor in Hollywood. <laughs>